just give you a little bit of background. Um, as of 2008, every car sold in America for emissions purposes is going to be required to have a controller area network in. That's basically a, it's a low cost network that's used to link all the computers together within a vehicle of an automobile. One of the uh, problems that the federal government has is how do you enforce emission standards within vehicles today? So there's a lot of different uh, makes and models of cars out there and what we want to do is have a universal way for technicians and shops and in garages to be able to plug into your car and verify that you're not polluting more than you should be. So that's where onboard diagnostics comes in handy and it originated from California and it's a standard that defines everything from which network we use all the way up to which uh, commands and which parameters that we can read from a vehicle. While the original purpose is to enforce emission standards within the country, it's a nice fringe benefit for us engineers that if we want to read this data off the vehicle for other purposes, such as maybe testing out new equipment in a vehicle or just logging our kids' drives out on the weekends, we can take care of all these applications thanks to the federal standards that are now required. I actually have a USB CAN interface made by NI, and this is the uh, standard onboard diagnostics plug that is located in every vehicle made since actually 1996 or so. And then according to the standards, it's actually required to be underneath the dashboard uh, down here and you can't probably see it from this angle, but it's required to be within several feet of the driver so you can access it while sitting in the vehicle. What we're gonna to do today is actually plug into this network here and actually have the car running already, so there's already data flowing back and forth on the vehicle. What we're able to do is actually wrote a LabVIEW program here that shows us a lot of parameters that are also on the dashboard of the vehicle, and then we're also able to get more data off that's not shown. So this is very useful for car enthusiasts and racers as well. So let's go ahead and plug this in. Fortunately, since automotive makers don't really trust anybody, they're not gonna let Joe Mechanic go in and change any critical parameters that are going to actually damage the engine. One of the purposes of the diagnostics, instead of actually directly accessing the computer, is that it's a lower priority communication that you can't interrupt the critical communications going back and forth between the engine and the transmission and the brake system, et cetera. We'll basically just plug in our CAN interface here. This is just a standard USB interface. And so the CAN network is on one side and USB is on the other side. And we just plug it into our laptop program over here, running LabVIEW. And then once that device recognizes, we're now able to run the program and read data off the vehicle. There's the CAN at the lowest level is a very low level network. It lets you basically move several bytes between different computers. That's great for low level communications, but for a higher level communication, you need more protocols and, uh, and messaging schemes to do that. So think like the internet, you have Ethernet, and on top of that you have TCP IP and the World Wide Web. So CAN is analogous to the Ethernet side. And there's actually diagnostic protocols called uh, ISO 15765 and some, several other protocols. So actually National Instruments sells a product called the Automotive Diagnostic Command Set, which implements the protocols for you so that way you can actually just speak with the higher level commands and not worry about the details of the communication between the different uh, bytes of the CAN bus. We're basically, our program here is using LabVIEW and the Automotive Diagnostic Command Set to communicate over the CAN interface to the car directly. And as you can see right here, we're actually reading data right now off the vehicle. I'm going to reach in and rev up the engine a little bit. And you can see, and you can see the actual parameters updating in real time off the engine there. This is useful for automotive technicians trying to diagnose problems. Perhaps there's a bad sensor, or perhaps you are trying to troubleshoot uh, certain conditions when things happen. So we're actually measuring the engine load, the, the, the amount of air coming into the engine, the temperatures right here. So you can see it's about 40 degrees Celsius. Uh, the air coming into the engine, and we are in Austin, so that's about right. Um, and you can not, we're also measuring the speed right here. You can also see the throttle position, so you can see how much I'm pushing the gas pedal on the vehicle right here. Thanks to the onboard diagnostic standards uh, enforced by the federal government and the California Air Resources Board, these protocols are standardized between all makes and models of cars. Um, and in the past, there are several different protocols, but in 2008, all vehicles sold in the United States will have controller area networks in them. So we're able to use one piece of hardware and the same software to communicate with diagnostics across all makes and models of cars. There are over 70 parameters that are uh, strongly recommended by the federal government that all vehicles support. Uh, everything from the ones you see here down to things like the oxygen sensors and the brake system status, etc. 
So you can pick and choose what parameters you're interested in. For the standardized parameters, there are several SAE, Society of Automotive Engineers Standards and International Standards Organization Standards, ISO, that uh, document all these standards. So for the actual uh, parameters that we're reading here, these are all documented in J1979. This uh, standard's been around for several years now. And then a lot of the lower level standards are documented in ISO 15765, which is the standards that dictate the actual CAN interface and how the, the handshaking between the test machine and the vehicle.